Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear listeners. Nauzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Habiya ya Allah, rabbi kuma tukaziban. Sadaqul azim. As we know this is um, an ayah from Surah Ar-Rahman which has been repeated 31 times. 31 times in that short surah. And Allah wants us to ponder over his favors. And one of the favors we want to discuss today uh, is, is uh, regarding what we are going to celebrate soon. Uh, next weekend is Mother's Day. So Mother's is the topic of our um, discussion today. This favor that that we are going to talk about is in the form of a woman, a woman who carried us within her for almost a whole year of a short life in this world. And that wasn't easy, bearing every hardship and discomfort to protect and nurture a frail being as the creator gently prepared us to come into this world, in this the realm of this world. We were there, we were comfortable. And when we came into this world, we came crying. We were not happy because we were very comfortable in there, but we were not supposed to be there forever. So we had to come out. And then who took care of us right away? Right away, we felt the comfort in the arms of that woman who gave birth to us. And from there on, we were her responsibility day in and day out, day in and day out. She didn't care about her rest. She didn't have her own schedule. Her schedule was around this this frail thing that she has to nurture and, and take care of day in and day out until until we know, until it's so many years before we are independent. I used to remember when, even when we were in school, I was uh, still a teenager. I was uh, grown up and t a teenager and I was independent for so many things. But when I came from school, I always wanted to have my mom there, right there for me. If she wasn't there for some reason, that was so upsetting for me. So we we all, alhamdulillah, I'm sure we uh, can relate to this. We can relate to this. She had to be there for us. She had to be there for us. Until later years, we went to colleges, we got married and all that. So what does Allah say? In his book, he says, when when they are um, older and uh, they are in need of your help, they they are not that strong anymore. So take good care of them. Be very humble towards them. And then one ayah it says, "Wala taqulana." Don't don't even say any word of contempt, any word which is off it, off off is a word, and that's just an expression. <clears throat> so saying the word out loud or just an expression of off. I'm I'm sick and tired of this. You know, sometimes we don't say it out loud, but the facial expression is there that. You know, enough is enough, kind of. And they are treated in that way in this world now. But uh, again and again, the book of Allah says that I, I created you, but I made them, your, your parents are, are a source of you coming into this world. So 
the, the one who cannot thank the creation can never thank the creator. The creation is those, uh, the, you know, I'm talking about the creation of Allah who are the source of us being in this world. So we, went, we need to bring that gratitude, that humbleness, that loving, caring attitude towards them. Um, be very uh, patient towards them. Be very respectful towards them. And be there for them for any time they need us. And this should be our goal, that we are going to respect them the way our deen wants us to. A woman who bore weakness to give, give forth from her being a pure and heavenly, you know, we were nourished through something from her body which was given to us. And, and that wasn't easy. Nothing is easy. And this woman is, um, she took care of us while we were growing up. She used to cook for us anything we liked, anything we wanted. She she used to, you know, we can all relate to all these things. And we just don't want to make this a yearly ritual. One day a year we devote for this woman who is a mother. The, the mother who, um, you know, so for us believers, uh, those who believe in Allah's book, those who are, uh, you know, the, those who submit to Allah's book, we, we call ourselves Muslims. What is there for us? They are your paradise. They are your paradise. At times, they might not need you. That's fine. You, you take care of yourself. You do whatever you want. But when they are in need of you, when they are old and they cannot take care of them the way they used to, then what is expected from us? That we do our best. We do our best. The, the way they did their best, the parents did their best for us. And we should, uh, we should uh, give whatever. It's, it's necessary to to make them feel so loved. What what do they want later in their later years? They just want to be uh, to to feel that they are they are well taken care of. They are in good hands with their children, who they they took care of when when they were not able to take care of themselves. They were not neglected. A woman who, even after all of her, uh, of uh, all of our blunders and mischiefs and wrongdoing, and all all of our um, ingratitude, ungrateful gestures, and insolent remarks, will not hesitate to say, "I forgive you." The mother is the most most forgiving person that we can think of when no one in the world will, will do that for us. People carry the grudges in their hearts. They, they don't want to uh, let go of things. And this is a woman who we call a mother. If only we knew <coughs> lofty stash, station in the sight of he whose mercy is endless. Allah's mercy is endless. And Allah, what did he say to, uh, about his mercy for his creation? He said, my love for you is 70 times the love of your mother. 70 times. And that means not just 70 times, but millions of times. But the point here is uh, that he compared his love to, to the mother's love. In other words, 
uh, he couldn't compare his love to any other other creation, any other person. The mother's love is so huge, and Allah is so huge. His love has to be compared to someone who has that kind of a love. But then Allah says, it's 70 times more. I'm like 70 mothers for you. And Allah, out of his compassion, gave us all the mothers. So this, this once a year uh, day that we celebrate as Mother's Day should be a good reminder for us to become better and better. It's not just supposed to be a, a ritual just by, um, you know, it's just buying and giving the gift, a card and just giving a hug and um, maybe uh, throwing a party or something like that. This is not supposed to be a ritual. It should be a reminder. It should be a reminder. How am I doing? Am I? Because year after year, our mothers, if they are alive, they are not getting any younger. They are getting older and they are going to be in need of more and more of our uh, caretaking towards them, of our uh, being uh, more patient towards how they are going to be. They are uh, just like they, they were patients. They showed their patience for us when we were growing up. We knew nothing. And maybe some parents, some mothers are going to go through those things they don't remember. They will repeat the same thing again and again, again and again. And then we get frustrated. We get frustrated. This is our test. The mothers were tested with the kids and now the kids are being tested with the mothers or fathers or both, one or two, both of them. And this, this, like I said, again and again, we need to remind ourselves, this is not one time a year. This is 365 days a year. We are committed. We are committed to this person brought into us into this world who took care of us in the best possible manner that we can we know how we can imagine when we have our own children we forget all the all, everything and we are committed to our parent our children so it's okay to commit ourselves to our children but we shouldn't neglect you know here there are the, our children to whom we are being the parents and, and then on the, we are in the middle. On the other side, we have our own parents who are in need of our care because they are not young anymore. They need to be taken care of. So just like we don't neglect our children, we cannot imagine of neglecting our children. Uh, same way, it, it should be the other way around too, because there's someone who never neglected us. Now, how can we neglect them? How can we not make time for them? How can we not do what is most needed for them? A lot of parents, they might not need um, uh, any financial assistance. They are uh, well-to-do, they, they are, uh, taken care of in that matter, but they might need um, other um, uh, other things that that we need to do for them or just, just giving them company, just, you know, putting them in the old homes and, and going there once in a while. If that's the need, then it should be uh, scheduled that they are there just to be taken care of uh, they are in a better place than being at home. That's if that's the best option. That's fine. But the the kids, it's their responsibility to make them feel that they have something to look forward to. And what is that? 
that my child is going to come to visit me. They are looking forward to those visits. If that's the, uh, you know, that's the setup, that's the stage they are going through. Every, every child, every parent, are, uh, they are going to a different test. And we have to pass those tests. Maybe uh, a child is born who is uh, handicapped and the parents dedicate, devote their lives to make sure that child is, uh, is not neglected. So maybe in the later years, something, something like that, some kind of a test like that, maybe for the, for the child, the son or the daughter, that the parents are in need of, uh, you know, they, uh, they need that uh, physical uh, help from them. They are not able to move. They are not able to take care of themselves. So we provide the care. We are mainly the, the thing is, what do we need? We need, I'm, I'm an early, elderly person now. And Alhamdulillah, so far, I'm physically good. I don't need my kids to come and do chores for me. But what do I need? I need them to make me feel that uh, they want to serve me, that they want to serve me. They want to do things for me. They are looking forward to coming and, and spending time with me, talking to me, showing me how much they love me. Because there was a time when, when we did for them, we made sure that uh, you know our love for them was always there, unconditional love. The parents have to give them unconditional love. They just don't love them because they are good but because they are their children. The same way, the children have to love them, the parents, because they are their parents. Not because they, they are so good, they, uh, you know, maybe they are not that good. Maybe they are whatever they are going through because of the old age. It's not about that. Again, this is supposed to be unconditional love from the other side. The both sides have to make sure that I love my child because I'm a mother and this is my unconditional love for my child. And as a, as a child for my parents, it should be some, the same way. I love my parents because they are my parents and I love them so much and I just want to do more and more and more for them. And uh, no matter how much I do, it's never going to be sufficient. I, I, I don't want to uh, disappoint them. If they expect me to do something, I have to do it right away. I don't want to neglect anything they see. I don't want to make them feel, oh, I don't care. I don't remember what they said. I want to remember everything and I want to be there. So this is, again, why? Because this is such a huge favor from our Lord. And which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? To deny is to show ingratitude. To show ingratitude is to lose one's blessings, like the sand flowing through one's fingers. To show gratitude to all, to the all merciful, is to show gratitude to the means he creates out of his endless mercy. What of the means which brought us into the world? The mothers, again, the mothers. If one's mother is alive, then cry out of thankfulness to Allah, to go to her sit at her feet, kiss her on the forehead, look her in the eyes and tell her how blessed you are for someone like her. Tell her how much you love her and never forget, and never forget the immortal words of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Paradise 
is under the feet of the mother. Paradise is under the feet of the mother.